Hello, and welcome to AP Language and Composition, your summer reading assignment, and the first step in what's going to be a really fun and exciting journey as we start the, or get ready to start the 2020-2021 school year. For your summer reading assignment, you have been assigned to read the book, A Whole New Mind by Daniel H. Pink, where the focus of this nonfiction literary novel is on right brain thinking and the future. So we're gonna have some really interesting discussions about this. There will be a test over it. And so this summer uh, reading assignment is actually gonna help you prepare for that test. So the first thing before we actually kind of go over, okay, how do you set up your dialectical journals in this video instruction, I want to talk about what is a dialectical journal. Most, if not all of you, should be familiar with this form of reading assessment. When you took Honors American Literature and wrote these, I believe, over Huckleberry Finn or maybe you've had this experience in another class. But if you haven't, or you're not familiar, or you just need a refresher, we're gonna talk about that for just a little bit. So what is a dialectical journal? This document is has been uploaded to the summer reading assignment, but I wanna go ahead and point out a couple of significant points and instructions. First of all, in the definition from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a dialectical journal is simply this. It's a conversation between you, the reader, and what you have been assigned to read. Your first step, Cole, is to select passages that make you think that you find interesting. And then you're going to write about those thoughts that you have about those passages and what they make you think or what you find interesting about them. And so the purpose of really writing down passages that stand out helps the text really belong to you as a reader. It's not just a book and you're going through the motions, hopefully, but that it actually has some meaning and some context. And that makes the connections that you make, the interpretations that you develop, uniquely yours. So if we scroll down to the second paragraph, Dialectic is the art of practice of arriving at the truth by using conversation involving question and answer. So what you need to keep in mind is that as you're reading this book and completing your dialectical journals, which is what I would highly recommend, you are having a series of conversation with the, the text, A Whole New Mind, and other texts that we are going to be reading throughout the, throughout the year. And this is a strategy that really the, the main purpose, the goal, is to help you process, comprehend, number one, what you are reading, number two, prepare yourself for group discussions or Socratic seminars, and gather that textual evidence for analysis, especially on the tests that cover the books. So again, by utilizing this assessment, you're getting three benefits from it. So your purpose following that second paragraph is that as you are reading, you want to identify significant pieces of text and you want to explain the significance of each text that you select. It's comparable to basically another form of highlighting as you're reading or annotating as you are reading and identifying significant pieces of text and then explaining their significance should be used to help you as the reader think about, digest, summarize, question, clarify, critique, and remember what is read. This will then help you when you are asked to write an essay or a paragraph identifying something important from the book. 
and it helps you utilize the information as you you know have read the book you've chosen these passages these texts you've explained the significance so that you don't have to go back and reread the entire piece a dialectical journal is really an effective and a strong method of assessing your comprehension as a reader which is what a lot of readers struggle with is comprehending their reading so before again i kind of walk through and explain how to set this up and i am going to show you that on a google doc let's look at the procedure because it's pretty simple we're going to be creating a t-chart and again i'm going to walk you through how to do that on a google doc and so as you can see in this first box right here that while you are reading and this is what i would strongly recommend choose the passages that really stand out to you and there's a couple different ways that you can mark these passages i tend to be and other students will read find a passage and then they'll type it or record it because you can voice record and it will type it for you these passages that stand out to you in the left hand column of the t chart again which i will demonstrate and you need to include that page number then in the right hand column of that same t, t chart you're going to type a response and again you can also use voice text for this this can include any ideas or insights that you may have questions that you have about what you've read definitely question anything that the authors write in the nonfiction books that we're going to be reading reflections as you reflect on what you're reading connections that you make and your own commentary on each passage so what's important to keep in mind is your left column is the direct quotations or a summary or paraphrase from the reading the right hand column is your commentary on those passages or those direct quotes and if you look here in, in at the bold at the bottom at the AP level your comments should be developed they should demonstrate a higher level thinking that goes beyond here's a summary of the plot and I'm going to be looking for evidence that you are thinking as you are reading you've chosen this text you've got your response and that response demonstrates critical thinking that goes beyond summary so how many dialectical journals do you need to have so at the bottom of page one for the nonfiction books that we read and we co complete a dialectical journal you need to have at least 20 entries and you're going to start off with 10 passages that are going to focus on the templates on the next two pages which i'm going to go over and then the other 10 the second set are going to focus on the templates and information on pages four through six so each text response is going to be a total of five or it's going to be worth five points all 20 dialectical journals will be a total of 100 points and it will count as a test grade so the really the only way that you can lose points is if you fail to document accurately and completely and i'll provide you that model so it should be a big help in setting that up and you can also have points deducted on the commentary reaction connection side for simply just summarizing not a very strong analysis and what's important to keep in mind is that you want to aim for at least a minimum of 50 to 100 words in length and again one of the options that you need to consider is voice texting your responses so let's look at pages two and three now because this template is going to be what you set up for the very first 10 passages remember and i want to repeat some of the information i've gone over you want passages that you find interesting and you can see that you're going to type them this is a direct quote and then you're going to put the page number right here and again i'm going to model this for you on the google doc and you can see that the commentary reaction again shows that the reader is thinking 
So if we look at the direct quote, there was no hurry, for there was nowhere to go. Nothing to see outside the boundaries of Maycomb County. But it was a time of vague optimism for some of the people. Maycomb, Great County, had recently been told that it had nothing to fear, but fear itself. So this is from the text, and the student, again, is critically thinking and notices that this town is slow, it's sleepy, it's isolated from everything else. There's definitely a connection to history of ATR, uh, FDR speech, excuse me, and there's a literary device. Here's an allusion to this time period in history and to the book. And then we can see the student kind of wondering, questioning, I wonder why they, the people in Maycomb, see the world this way and kind of gives um, an opinion. Maybe it's because people don't travel because it's during the time of the Depression. Maybe it's this. And the student also says, you know, it's interesting to me that, and goes further, and we have, again, his opinion, his thoughts. I feel as if people don't feel optimistic now. So it makes a connection to society today. I certainly don't know what I'm going to do after high school and college. And then back to the Depression, the student asks a question. During the Depression, about what did Americans generally have to feel optimistic? They just didn't know any better. So that's one example of, again, for the first 10 passages, I'm going to select, or you are going to select, a, a text, a quote, a passage that I find interesting that just stands out to me. And then I'm going to write a very above critical thinking, not summarizing, but noticing something about the setting, noticing something maybe about the author's description, making a connection to something historical, maybe even something that you can connect to a previous class you've taken, a previous ex experience, wondering, thinking about something, noticing, and maybe even throwing in a question. And again, you can kind of vary that, and I'll have some more information about that here in a little bit. Here's a second example from the nonfiction book, The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. And notice that this one kind of starts with, not right at the beginning, but kind of more towards the middle. We still have the direct quotes, then we have the page number in parentheses after it. And in this, which again is a nonfiction book, and that's what AP Lang is more focused on, we see that this student focuses on the author, how the author chose to end the first section of the novel with this particular sentence. He, the student really analyzes, there's excellent visual details, um, how it makes the student feel or the audience feel as readers. And again, just analyzing the emotional components of this passage and the physical. And, and when you combine that, the student says you start to understand what soldiers in Vietnam dealt with every day. And then kind of ends, this quote sums up that there seems to be that the men have confusions about fighting in the Vietnam War, um, how they clung to the only certainty, which was what? The things they had to carry in an extremely confusing time frame in, in our history and in our world where there was normal rules that were completely suspended. So again, this is a great example for a whole new mind because the things they carried is nonfiction. So what are what am I looking for? What kind of passages do you need to select? Obviously, I've already kind of gone over that they need to seem interesting, but you also want them to seem significant, powerful, very thought provoking, or even puzzling. So you might either type or voice record passages that are effective and or have this creative use of any stylistic, the style of writing, or the author's use of literary devices, which does also occur in nonfiction. Passages that definitely 
remind you of something in your life or something that you've experienced, you've seen before. Any type of shift in the plot or in the author's points, and again, which will happen in a nonfiction, there'll be shifts from one point to the next. Definitely, and number four is a big one, choosing, selecting a passage that makes you realize something you hadn't seen before, you hadn't realized before, which is the glory of reading. If you see any type of pattern that the author is using, like a reoccurring image, a reoccurring idea, a reoccurring color, a reoccurring symbol, or a reoccurring motif. And if you don't know what a motif is, again, look that up, Google that real quickly, because uh, there's definitely a motif, themes, symbols, images, or ideas that reoccur in nonfiction. Um, you can also select passages that have confusing language, the diction that the author uses, or any unfamiliar vocabulary or diction, any passages that have surprising events or confusing events. And again, that happens in nonfiction. And finally, any passages that illustrate a particular character, a particular person that's introduced in the nonfiction text, you'll see that in A Whole New Mind and you'll see that in others, or passages that illustrate a particular setting. So how do you respond? You have some variation, you have a variety of ways, which is nice because it gives you choice. The most important point that I'm going to emphasize and you're going to see right here in bold is that whatever observation you make, especially in these first 10, it needs to be specific and it needs to be detailed. And you obviously can write as much as you want, but you need for each entry to kind of stay in that 50 to 100 word length. So, Basic responses will raise questions about the beliefs of the author, the values that the author is implying in the text. Basic responses give your personal reactions to the passage, again, especially in the first 10. Basic responses discuss the words, the diction, ideas the author presents, actions that the author takes, or actions that a character takes in a nonfiction novel. For example, memoirs have characters, they're real life, and they have certain actions that you may discuss, analyze, dissect. Again, basic responses when you have a reminder of something from your own experiences to what you read, you are making a connection, and that's what helps you remember what you're reading. And basic responses can include you can include you agreeing with the author or completely disagreeing with an author and or a character. So you're going to see in the nonfiction novels, authors' points of view, characters that you're gonna meet, real people, real characters as a story is told in a nonfiction and you can agree or disagree with that. So here's some sample sentence starters. The higher level responses that I will be looking for, and again, that analyze is you really dissecting and looking for the why, as far as why did the text use a literary device? How, why did the author have this tone, choose this structure, choose this style of writing, use this imagery to paint words with pictures? Making connections between the author's points, ideas, values, and or the characters or events that occur in the text. And again, you're gonna see this in the summer reading. You have the author's experience, but he interacts with different people, characters, he experiences different events. Making connections from the book that you are reading to another type of text. That could be another book, that could be a film, that could be a song, that could be a show, etc. You also, in a higher level response, you really discuss the word choice or the diction choice, the ideas of the author, the actions of the author and or characters. You look at events or you look at a description of something in that nonfiction book from 
a different perspective. And you analyze a passage and its relationship to the story as a whole. And I want to go back up to this nonfiction, nonfiction example from The Things They Carried. The title, The Things They Carried, the student is able to make a connection from this passage to the book as a whole at the end of this dialectical journal. So this gives you some basic instructions and understandings of a higher level response. Now we need to spend some time talking about the second set of dialectical journals, which will be 11 through 20. And so you're going to transition from here's 10 passages I find interesting, I find significant, I find curious, maybe I agree or disagree with the author's point, and now I'm going to transition into more of that focusing on the components that really make up what AP Lang is about, looking at the author's form of writing, the structure of how they wrote, what they wrote, looking at the author's purpose, their his or her tone, his or her writing style, what imagery or images, or maybe just an image, it kind of depends, did the author incorporate throughout the nonfiction text? And also looking at the details that the author included. And finally, rhetorical devices. And this I'll explain more in just a little bit. So let's talk about form and structure. Um, again, you're going to see this T chart and what I want to point out right now, don't use these bullets. You will not have bullets in your dialectical journals. Let me kind of scroll back up again. It's going to look like this where you have no bullets and you're going to be using this gray text box up here to number those dialectical journals. And again, I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So you need 10 dialectical journals that focus on these four specific items. Again, we're transitioning from what I find interesting. Now I'm going to really analyze these certain writing aspects of this nonfiction text. So again, you're still going to pick quotes. That stays the same in the left-hand column. But the first template is going to focus on form and structure. Again, there are four specific areas you're going to focus on. There are four templates. And so template one of the four templates focuses on the form and structure of the author's writing. You need at least two to three passages that focus on analyzing the author's form and structure. And then you're going to analyze, okay, what is happening with the author's form and the author's structure of writing? What's the time frame? How much time is being covered? And am I noticing specific patterns in the form and the structure of the author's writing? What am I noticing? In template two, or the second template, you are focusing, again, at least two to three passages on the author's purpose. Every author has a purpose. Every author has a tone and every author has a specific writing style. So you're going to select, again, two to three passages or excerpts. And in your analysis, you're focusing on, okay, what is the author trying to accomplish? What is the author's purpose for his or her audience? What arguments, what points is he or she trying to make, trying to get across to his or her audience? What is the author's attitude? And how is that attitude, how is that author's tone, serious, humorous, morbid, etc. How is that tone, that attitude of the author, revealed through the author's diction, the author's words, and the author's syntax? Syntax is how an author 
takes words, takes phrases, combines them to make sentences. And it is through the words and the sentences of an author that the author's tone is revealed. I highly recommend look up some of these words. It's a quick Google search to kind of help you understand these if you need a little bit more than my my verbal explanation of what some of these key components mean for each of these templates. The third template, again, there's four specific areas that we're going to be focusing on in Dialectical Journals 11 through 20. And the third template is where you are focusing on looking for those any reoccurring images that the author utilizes that are going to appeal to our senses as the reader. Every author does this, even authors who write nonfiction. They have to appeal to our senses so that we want to continue reading and that we become interested. Point out details. Does the author use specific numbers, specific facts, specific De descriptions that really support the argument that he or she is making. How are these images, how are these details utilized by the author? The author has a purpose. And so through the use of images or imagery and through the use of details, that author is, you know, basically achieving his or her purpose. And again, that emotional pull that we have in reading, what emotions are being evoked from you, the reader, as a result of the images and the details. Finally, our last template. This one focuses on rhetorical devices, which is a huge component of AP Lang. So you are going to look for examples of logos, pathos, and ethos. Again, you're looking for logos, pathos, and ethos in the passages from the nonfiction book. And you're going to explain in your commentary the connections that these appeals make for the audience, the beliefs that are revealed through the use of these three rhetorical devices. And there are other rhetorical devices besides logos, pathos, and ethos. Google them. Google the most commonly used rhetorical devices, and you will be given this short or a shorter list. There's no way you can cover all the rhetorical devices, but definitely earning a higher score. Maybe having one passage where you focus on the ethos, logos, pathos, then choosing a different rhetorical device that you address for the second. And then for the third, you pick another different rhetorical devices. And since this is your first foray into rhetorical devices, there are some that are definitely much easier to spot, to see in the author's writing. So for a total of 20, this template, you need at least three. You can have four, but you have to have at least three. So that means I've got, uh, I just did my math wrong in my head. If I choose to do a, the minimum of three analyzing rhetorical devices that the author utilizes, then I have seven more that I need to complete. So if I choose two from template three, I write about two passages that focus on purpose tone style and two that focus on form and structure i'm at nine dialectical journals and i get to choose one more 
from either template one, template two, oops, too fast there, template three, or template four. So again, the main focus is that you have to at least meet the minimum. By meeting the minimum of each template, you'll have nine dialectical journals for 11 through 20. And then you get to pick your last one, dialectical journal number 20, from one of those four templates. Here are some other literary style elements that can help you, especially when you're focusing on these four templates. So when you're looking at diction and you're looking at syntax, this is something that you could write about. Does the author use very long sentences or short, or are they mixed? If the author changes from long to short or short to long, why? Is the word order, is it straightforward or is it very unconventional as far as the author style? It doesn't follow what you are used to reading in literature. Again, look at that diction, look at that word choice. Is it efficient or is it elaborate? Look at the vocabulary again for that diction. So are those vocab words, are they very technical? Are they very flowery, very flowing? Are they colloquial? Are they obscure or, or, or? Again, the vocabulary that an author chooses, there's going to be a certain style to that vocabulary. Again, you know that there's a template on tone and the author's attitude. You can also contemplate word color or word sound. How much does the language call attention to, or how much does it depend on the quality of its sound through both literary devices and rhetorical devices? Alliteration, assonance, consonance, dissonance, an unusual word choice. Again, I could go on and on. The choice of words, the phrasing is all going to be extremely important. Look at the paragraph structure of the author or either the chapter structure, the sec section structure, each author kind of does it differently. Are the paragraphs really short or are they just these really long blocks running across the page? Does the author experiment with language? Do you see unusual techniques? Do you see like stream of consciousness? Do you have a mixing of writing styles or a mixing of genres? Is there this unusual layout on the page? Does the author break the rules of grammar and a form and so on? Again, what experimentation in language do you notice? I've included 75 rhetorical terms that are utilized for persu persuasion. And even though this is a nonfiction book and you're gonna be reading other nonfiction books, the author has a purpose. And part of that purpose is to persuade the reader to maybe agree, to maybe think a little bit differently, but definitely to kind of see this author's point of view, values, beliefs, and agree. And if there are any rhetorical devices you're not familiar with, again, you can look them up. You can hear how they are pronounced. There'll be a few that you'll be familiar with, and there'll be some that you've never heard of before. But that's the joy of taking this class and learning about some other things that you haven't learned about. Here's definitely the rubric for the dialectical journal. And since I'm gonna be under the assumption that most students want to kind of hit that critical reader and get that A response, um, here's what I should be able to see. Extra effort is very evident. The quotes that you choose, they are powerful. They are relevant. They are thought provoking. They aren't just something that was just snatched from the page. I've got to get the summer reading assignment done. You as the reader, and as you are analyzing what you are reading, you are able to read between the lines of what you are comprehending. You can see between just what the author is stating. You also, 
when you take the meaning of the text, the passages, it's not just in your sense, but in a universal sense. You can see beyond even your own perspective, which is extremely impressive. You are able to create a new meaning for yourself because of the connections that you make between the book or the text, your own experiences, and other texts that you have read. Those connections are critical and really show that critical reader. And when I read your responses, you are carrying on a dialogue with the writer, with Pink, with whichever nonfiction author you are reading. You question what the author is writing or stating. You agree, you disagree, you appreciate the point of view or the object. And we're obviously looking for sentences that are grammatically correct. You can kind of read through the others, but this is what will really ensure that you will probably earn an A as a test grade for this summer reading assignment, this first grade that is usually taken at the beginning of the fall semester. So now that we've kind of talked about, gone through this attachment that is on the BD Summer Assignment website, and you've got these video instructions, let's look at, okay, how do we set up our dialectical journal? So what I want to go to now is I want to go to a new tab, and I want to open up my Google Drive, and I want to create a new Google Doc. And the first thing I want to do is I want to title this. Okay. And then I'm going to go down and before I even start typing, I need to set up the format of my dialectical journal. Again, before I even start typing. And anytime you open up a new document, either Word or Google, your computer has it automatically set up for a certain font a certain font style, and a certain spacing. So I want to make sure I have that professionally set up. Again, we're going to really be following, for the most part, MLA guidelines. So I'm going to hit Control A on my keyboard, and I want to choose, there's four font styles right here at the beginning that are probably your most professional. Times New Roman is the most common. We have Cambria, we have Georgia, and we have Arial. So you want to pick between these four. I'm going to go with that classic Times New Roman. MLA rule is it's font size 12. And now I want to go to my line spacing. So I'm going to click on this. My computer is automatically set up to 1.15 spaces but I wanna to go to the custom spacing because I wanna make sure that this, and this is a little different, but I wanna make sure my line spacing is single. And this is extremely important that the before paragraph spacing and the after paragraph spacing is set at zero. That is extremely critical and I'm gonna hit apply. So now I have my font style, my font size, and my line spacing all set up correctly. The next step I want to take is I want to type out my heading. So you're going to type the first, your first and last name. So I'm just going to use kind of a, a general student name, Joseph Smith. Remember that this is single spaced, but we want to hit enter twice because for the MLA instructions, we want to double space our heading. We're going to type the name of the instructor, hit enter twice. We're going to type the name of the course. And you want to, you can use the and symbol for the and. We want to type out the full name of the course, AP English Language and Composition. And then we want to hit enter and we want to make sure that we have the due date which is, and you'll want to double check this, but I want to go ahead and just uh, put down the, the due date. Let's say that it is um, August 11th. We're going to type out that month, 2020, and we're going to hit enter twice. You need to go ahead and center 
we want to hit Control I or press the I for the italics, and we're going to type a whole new mine in italics. Take off the italics. I just have to hit Control I again. Dialectical journal. The other item that I want to incorporate is I want to double click up at the top and that's going to open up my header footer. Again, notice that my font style, my font size, it goes right back to that automa automatic format that my computer has set up. And you can change that. There's a way to change it, but I'm just going to focus on getting this set up correctly. So I want to go back to the original font style that I chose, Times New Roman font size 12. I want to line this over to the far right and I'm going to type in my last name, the students. I'm going to hit space and do not type. Do not type page number. I want to go to insert. I want to go to page numbers and I want to select this first option right here that's going to insert my page numbers. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the header footer, put my cursor next to dialectical hit enter and then I want to align it over to the far left and now I'm going to insert a table so I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to a table and I'm going to go ahead and I think do four to create my t-chart so you can see that the spacing um, normally I would hit a second space but when I put my cursor after journal and I just do enter once, when I insert that table, it gives me the double spacing that I need. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and highlight this first row. And if you right click right in there and scroll down, we're going to go to table properties. And I'm going to make the cell background um, kind of a light color, some like you know an actual color color um, other students will just choose a gray and I'm going to hit close oops let me do that again oh, no it did not do that so again to right click go to table properties so background let me go that and I'm okay and then I'm going to center this part I want to hit control B and I'm going to type passage number one same thing over here I want to center this control B commentary for one. So this is going to help set up the numbering system that I'm going to use. So this is going to be the first text box and I'm going to be reading a whole new mind. Again, you can voice text or you can type. And as I am reading, I want to find passages that stand out to me. And so I find one and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of let's pretend that I'm typing uh, this passage. I'm going to put the period, I'm going to end with the quotes, and then I'm again, remember, going to put that page number in parentheses right after. Over here is where I'm going to type my commentary. And again, I need to type what I find interesting connections I am able to make questions that I have etc and this then ends my first passage from the text and my first commentary and again I want to have that 50 to 100 words so to make it a little bit easier what I can do is go back up here and I'm going to highlight this entire first row I'm going to hit control C and then I'm going to go down to this next text box 
highlight the row, and I'm going to hit Control V. Obviously, this is not passage one, but I just got to change it passage two, commentary two. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type my quote, my passage. There's my page number. And over here is going to be my commentary. So what you can do is you can kind of see how um, many you're able to fit on the first page. But if you hit, and let me undo that so you can see what I just did. So I'm done copying the second, first and second commentaries. And again, it just kind of depends. You want to kind of eyeball, all right, how much room do I have? And I'm going to put, I've got my cursor here at the very end. If I hit tab, that inserts another row. So if I think, again, I'm going to highlight this row, I'm going to hit control V, I'm going to change that to passage three. And then I'm going to hit tab. Again, it will change that color or keep that color gray. I want to go to table properties, make it none. Okay, that brings it back to white. And then I can go back to my quote. So again, it's just kind of playing around with the template and kind of using Google Docs to my example to set it up. So let's say that, you know, my first couple passages are really long and I've kind of got this. Sometimes you're able to tab and you can get this um, to separate onto the next page. But if I've kind of got this scenario going on, it's just kind of awkward. So I can, you know, just undo and let's just get rid of these two passage or these two rows. I'm going to delete those two rows. Okay. Um, and then I can just click out of there, go on to the next page, and then I can go back to insert. And again, I can do a couple tables and just kind of go that way so that I'm breaking them up. One more final point that I want to make now that we've kind of gone over, here's how you're going to set up your dialectical journal on a Google Doc, is your page numbers should definitely, I should be seeing from the first dialectical journal all the way to number 20, a range of page numbers. It doesn't mean that you have to have a passage chosen every 10 pages or every 20 pages. But, you know, if you have a couple that are close together, 42, 55, um, you know, there should be some passages, again, that just show that you have read throughout the book and you've taken passages from the beginning, the middle, and the end. And so thus ends your video instruction for dialectical journals. If you have any questions throughout the summer or when you start, uh, definitely feel free to email me at scromer at bishopdwinger.com. I'm pretty quick about getting back to students. And this will be shared, finalized when we return to school in August of 2020. I'm so excited about the course. I love teaching it. And I can't wait to just have each and every one of you in my class when we start back to school. I hope you're enjoying your summer. And just have a great day, and I look forward to an amazing, amazing AP class.